And this is Mother Show, the unscripted show that's all about Mothership, the sci-fi horror role-playing game. We want our shop at TuesdayNightGames.com to be the one-stop shop for all of your Mothership needs. And I recently went on Amazon.com and searched Mothership to see if there was anything on Amazon that wasn't available at TuesdayNightGames.com. And I was surprised to find these. <laughs> Print on demand adventure modules. What? There's games available through Amazon that aren't available through our website? Well, this just cannot do. So I went ahead and bought them. Here we have Mirror Image, Fear Factory 5, and Salt. But today, we're just talking about salt. Is it worth its salt? Or is it just gonna leave a salty, bad flavor in your mouth? Let's find out. If you wanna know size comparison of salt, you can see what it looks like compared to our regular zine size. It is definitely bigger, but also not as big as this standard gigantic bish known as Gorgonok. So big, look at this. Nothing as big as a Gorgonok. Robert D. Brewer's Salt is a 34-page full-color RPG module. And yeah, I counted. It is indeed a full 34-color pages. They're not counting these white blank pages at the end. Little prep time is needed to run this fast-paced one-shot module, perfect for first-timer experienced wardens. Your players are forced to enter an unregistered research facility on a remote planet. A brief moment of joy in an idyllic setting is soon followed by a heart-pounding race for their lives. It has an easy to follow layout, includes descriptions, warden information, and tips for every room, three brand new creatures, seven NPCs, 13 new weapons, a non-creature threat that is just as deadly and adds a time element to the game, a map of the unregistered research facility, a reference section with creature, weapon, and NPC stats, handouts to create additional tension between players and promote role playing, and additional hooks for once the adventure is completed. This adventure has many challenges for the players to overcome. Does it? Well, I took a slight gander into this and I can tell you, yeah, it does have all those things. If I'm being completely honest and vulnerable, I kind of wanted to not like salt because how dare they go ahead, print on demand through Amazon instead of providing through the TuesdayNightGames.com store. Why not? I honestly don't know why not. And hopefully after this, maybe the author Robert D. Brewer will go ahead and see, oh yeah, I should probably publish this, but I get it. You have to print out a whole bunch of copies and then sell them to who's going to be the retailer like TuesdayNightGames.com and sell them through their store. But instead of having a whole backlog of issues that you've printed and stored somewhere in your home or at a warehouse, you just wait for someone to make an order and then Amazon will print it. That is probably why it has the cardinal sin of having a blank inside cover on both front and back covers. What? Cardinal sin number one. What a wasted opportunity. Imagine the map being there or even better yet, handouts because yeah, Yes, this adventure does have handouts. These classic things that we get to hand out to our fellow players. Now, unfortunately, this is very flawed. I think this has so much potential and is probably worth your money. However, it misses the mark. Yes, indeed. This is a one person team. Robert D. Brewer, they went rogue on their own. And Robert, if you're watching this, I can tell that you have a singular direction and theme throughout. You can tell this is a one person team, but that also means it's lacking some proofreading. There's definitely some typos and other errors, including, but not limited to, references to page numbers. You'll be reading, it'll say, oh, look at page 23 for the map. But then if you look at this book, um, uh, there are no page numbers. But here, going back to the handout, you'll see a definite no-no. But if you look at it, this is one handout, this is the other handout, and this handout needs to be cut into individual pieces. But that means you're destroying the other side of the handout. What are you doing, bro? So let's take a quick page-by-page -page look at Robert D. Brewer's Salt. It does have wonderful art and everything 
everything's done by Robert D. Brewer. It does have those computer graphics, kind of gives you a good image depiction. It also looks like computer graphic pornography you might find if you go onto any of those porn sites. Beautiful backgrounds here, legibility. Again, some typos and misspellings, but if we're looking just at the art, here's the main antagonistic creature that will be chasing the players. Some good water leaking images. You're now listening to the smooth, silky voice of Alan during the editing process after the filming. I'm coming to you now to let you know that I do have additional thoughts that I forgot to record. So stay tuned for further interruptions later on, but now back Back to me looking at Here art. Here are the different creatures. Here's the NPCs that gives you the stats and the details and personality. Here's some great weapons and items like Frisbee Suck. Sucks out the oxygen so if it lands near someone, <sighs> All of a sudden, they'll be knocked unconscious because they can't breathe. Gravity bomb, vibration ball, ball buster gun. It's a C-2016 fuel scrubber robotic snake has been turned into a bullet. The bullet does minimal damage at first, but the snake enters the bloodstream and nests in the kidneys before traveling down the urethra, using its razor blade tail to cut its way out. The victim suffers extreme pain, if not death. <laughs> Some nightmare clever stuff here. Some interesting items. A worm in a box. What the hell is that? And then it has pumpkin bear. Ooh, look at the pumpkin bear mech. So it even has some mechs. The flying skull looks right out of Aliens and also StarCraft. Five, five, five. And again, we have the handouts here that I would love to hand out to players. If you think of the continuum on rails versus complete sandbox, salt is definitely way over on rails. Perhaps arguably too much. It gives you nice scripted prompts that you can read as the warden to your players as indicated with italics right there. But as I went through this, I realized there aren't really many player choices until you get to choosing which way you wanna go. I believe this is really good for beginning wardens, someone who may be inexperienced and this will hold your hand through the experience. That way you have all these script prompts. You're gonna land on this planet because your ship is going to be damaged. It does give you a beautiful note saying, hey, make sure that the ship that lands on this planet is something that's disposable to the party. So the party has worked really hard at buying a ship. Don't use that ship for this adventure. Use some type of transport ship or something else because that ship's gonna be destroyed. The ship is damaged and you have to do an emergency landing and you land on this planet that is mostly ocean salt water. It has seagulls, crabs. It does have very terrestrial life forms, very earth-like life forms. But then the tsunami comes in and you have to go into this research facility. It says you can go back back into your ship if you want to hide from the tsunami, but everyone dies. So realistically, it's a forced decision right there. And then once you get in to the research facility, you have your first puzzle. Great. The tsunami is constantly causing leaks. So the timing mechanism, which I love, is the fact this research facility is about to buckle under pressure and is going to break. It talks about how this is a cheap research facility that was built on a temporary basis, and therefore you need to get out of there before everything just implodes under the water pressure. So that's the timing mechanism, and I love that. But as you go in, you really don't have too many choices, and the game doesn't do a great job of letting you know when players make choices. For instance, I noticed that you come in here, and here's these rooms, but it doesn't tell you in the descriptions of the room, oh, you can go up or west or east or left, or there's several rooms here. It seems like it's very linear. So an experience warden would have to read this in advance and say, okay, I realize I have to use this map and and create choices of direction that my players can and cannot go to. Now, while it says only 50 minute prep time, I believe that's a lie. I think you need to read this whole thing thoroughly and it definitely will take you more than 15 minutes to read it from cover to cover. With all that said, there is a really fun adventure in here. Is it a one shot as it's advertised? Depends on your definition of a one shot. For me, a one shot is something that can be done easily within a three hour session. I've really broken this down into 30 minutes per encounter, because that's really how you want to measure how long a session would be is by encounter, because that's really where the players have to challenge themselves. And the way I think about it is it's about 20 to 30 minutes per encounter. So a one shot is probably around six encounters. The encounter itself takes about 10 minutes, but then you have that 10 minute crescendo leading up to it. And then you have that 10 minute denouement after that encounter. So I like to think, erring on the side of caution, each encounter is about 30 minutes. And if you have three hours, that means you have about six encounters. There's way more than six encounters in here. There's no way you can do this within
within three hours unless you've already run it or you're well practiced in it and you start cutting out material left and right that you don't think is necessary. But there is a lot of good things here that will help first time wardens. It's me again from the future post filming, but during edits, I just wanted to say there is something I forgot to film while doing this. And that is salt does one of my absolute favorite things that role playing games do. I like to do this in my own missions and campaigns that I write, but in salt, each player gets individual handouts, secrets that they can choose to keep from the other players or share. In Salt, it's in the form of flashbacks and it creates suspense and suspicion between players, gives them their own sense of agency, but also this whole allure of what do you do with the information. In fact, one of the handouts suggests one of the other players may have sabotaged the ship causing you to crash land on this planet. <laughs> so way to go, Salt. I just didn't want to end this without including that little nugget of joy. So do I recommend Salt? Yeah, I think it is worth it, Salt. I will say, obviously I'm totally biased and I want to promote Tuesday Night Games as much as possible. That's the whole point of this channel is to get you to buy all our shit. But with that in mind, I think if Robert went ahead and used one of our in-house editors, we would have really refined this and given some points, I think this really has a lot of potential. I would love to see the map right here. I would love that on TuesdayNightGames.com, you could download what you need. There's even a spot in here where it says, hey, go to this website to download some of these sound effects because you need them for a puzzle. But why not have that all inclusive in place where you go for your one-stop mothership needs, TuesdayNightGames.com. I'm not sure if I did a good job explaining this in a short amount of time. Let me know your thoughts. Should I go in greater detail? Was this too light? Did I give it a fair shake? Do you want to know more about it? Are you interested in salt? I want to know the impact this video had on you. I'm out of here. <laughs>